Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to my F1 22 My Team Career Mode. This is the pre-season video for season number two. Following our opening and first season, this second one is going to be quite an important next step in this journey, this next chapter in our team getting to the top of Formula 1. Because of course, last season we were fighting for P7 in the Constructors, so now it's time to take the next step, use that P7 as a foundation to spring board up to fight for the top of the midfield. P4 will be the goal, but you never know with how things go over the course of the season. Upgrades coming in, HQ facility buys, maybe we can do even more and bridge the gap to the top three teams fully. Before we actually kick off season two, we've got pre-season as usual on this channel with my career mode series. I like to take you guys through a pre-season episode because there's a lot of admin and actually a lot of stuff to do in between the last race and the first race of the next season in the winter break. We can actually make upgrades still. We've got a couple of R&D points still to hand. Nearly 1,500 and so we're going to go ahead and purchase a heavily discounted major fuel efficiency upgrade which will take us to have the best engine on the grid. Of course, regulation reset. The R&D rules are changing. Chassis and durability have reset. But engine and aero, we can purchase anything and it will carry over. So making the most of that and the R&D points we have right now by purchasing that one upgrade at least but now we're getting into the very crucial point of this winter break the contract renewal and it is time to look into signing a brand new teammate Felipe Drogovic he was a very good starting teammate heck he even got the team's very first and only to date podium obviously with a bit of thanks to me at the Belgium Grand Prix but he did very very well but for the ambitions we have now in season two we need to go further and I've had my eye on two drivers the first one is Sebastian Vettel. Now, I've had my eye on Sebastian Vettel for the last three games in my team. I've wanted to maybe sign Seb. I've always had a soft spot for Seb. I think a lot of people have a soft spot for Sebastian Vettel, the four-time world champion. Obviously, past his peak now, you would say, in terms of performance in Formula 1. But I think in the game, at least, he's still got a lot to give. And, of course, he won the Brazilian Grand Prix. He won a Formula 1 race after so, so long last season. Season. So he could be a massive, massive one for us. And of course, in terms of our power unit, we are powered by Red Bull powertrains at the moment, which is obviously the Honda engine taken on by Red Bull. So if we were to sign Seb in a kind of weird way, it would be almost like a homecoming back to the Red Bull family circle as we strengthen our affinity with Red Bull and make our partnership a lot deeper when it comes to the engine supply and also influence on the team. So Vettel would be a very nice homecoming fit in many ways. And then the other choice that I have had on my radar, and a lot of you have suggested on my radar, is Alexander Albon. Now, he had a storming season at Williams. He got a podium in the same race Vettel won the race. He got second place and held off quicker cars in that race. He's had some brilliant races many, many times before where he's out-qualified us. He's got into Q3 multiple times in what has been the worst car on the grid in many, many ways. And when he's had the rub of the green and the strategy's gone his way, he's shown he's got actually a lot of potential. And of course, unlike Vettel, Albon is already a part of the Red Bull family. He still boasts a Red Bull logo on his helmet. He's still very much managed by Red Bull and has been allowed to sign to Williams, obviously, for 2022. So we could strike up a deal with them that would see him move over to our team, maybe even for a discounted price. But our number one target right now is going to be the four-time world champion just because of that rating he's got the experience he would bring to the team and he is open to an approach which is a surprise because uh, sometimes in previous f1 games when i've tried to sign sebastian he has not wanted to be approached but we meet all the all the targets we need that he's demanding in terms of the cash the spec of our chassis department and then also the performance of our vehicle which was better than aston martin eventually over the course of this season. So happy that Seb is willing to hear us out and be approached for a contract but we are going to be in a bidding war with Aston Martin, his current team themselves. Because of course they'd want to keep Sebastian around. He did win them their first race as the Aston Martin outfit just last season. But maybe now that's unfortunately going to make it difficult to actually move in to actually signing Seb because we go into the negotiations and immediately we're hit with
with a barrier of entry in terms of how much cash we have to hand. Aston Martin, they're a big, big brand with the backing of Lawrence Stroll. They have the cash. We, as a starting team, only in our second season now, don't have the funding. So... Unfortunately, the fairy tale potential of signing the four-time world champion, bringing him back to glory days under our roof, is going to have to end there. So now we come to our second option, but the option that maybe makes a lot more sense and actually fits our story a lot better in terms of, you know, growing this partnership with Red Bull Racing. So Alex, he's already in the Red Bull family. And with the partnership we already have with Red Bull by being supplied by their engines, we can work out a deal where the buyout is negligible. And all we're negotiating here really is what Alex is happy with in terms of his salary and what he's going to be paid. Can we pay? more than Williams. Yes, we can. We have the funding for that. And so we have signed Albon as our brand new teammate for season two. And I'm really, really bloody excited by this because you guys know if you watch season one, we had so many battles and altercations with Albon where we just found him on circuit and we and we seem to be quite equally matched really. And also the amount of times he out qualified us in a Williams car, the amount of times he was in positions that I was surprised to see him in and the fact he got a podium in that car just makes me really excited to see what he could do in our machinery. Over 80 rating for a second teammate is really, really good. And that's without the Personnel HQ boosted stats, remember, because those are incorrectly uh, not being applied yet. We're waiting for a patch in the game for them to come up because normally we'd see all his rating stats with plus green numbers to be added on for our Personnel HQ upgrades. Don't, those aren't being applied yet. So once they do get applied eventually, when a patch comes in, I hope, sooner rather than later, he could be a very, very highly rated driver. So after that deal, we do have a decent amount of money still left over. 5.3 million to be exact. So we can definitely now look into upgrading our HQ facilities. With that 5.3 million, we could get other uh, car performance HQs up to level 2. But instead, I want to go a different route. Because I think at the moment, we're not earning enough R&D to warrant to get to spec 2 on some other departments. We don't really need to delve into the performance side of facilities quite yet because we're just not earning enough R&D. So I thought let's go ahead and purchase first of all our very first marketing upgrade which I've wanted to do for a while but just we haven't had the funding yet and then also buying the pit crew improvements. So that's only 1 million and that's not that much and that will hopefully improve and minimize the mistakes in the pit stops and just generally the speed of our pit crew and that's going to be quite important in a very tight midfield battle where literally the one and only stop in a race maybe could be very crucial to undercutting or overcutting someone. And actually, one other factor is you've got to remember, we've still not even been given our prize money for season one. That comes in this transition when we get to that end of season. So we've got a lot of cash on the way from our season one sponsors and the prize money for last year. And it's going to be a very decent amount. So with this money now going into season two, we can now purchase the the other facilities that we need to to get to level two on some of those uh, on some of those HQs and and you know we've already done we've already done the business we wanted to do on the marketing and the personnel side as well and with that we are going to make our transition now into season two of this my team career mode on F122 and this is your new official calendar for this second season we've got a slim down 16 race calendar now going forwards for season two onwards because as has been the case now for the last two F1 games. You know, 16 has been a really nice number. We're removing a lot of races that have been a little bit lackluster. And also we found it makes it way more intense in terms of every race matters that much more, basically. And the stakes are so much higher. And I think 16, personally for me, is a much nicer number to get through than 22. 22 is just quite bloated and has, like I said, a lot of tracks that have been quite lackluster in real life and in the game. You know, you know that a track's boring and doesn't really do it for you if it's lackluster in the F1 game because usually the F1 game can make most tracks quite exciting but for those of you that have watched my My Team career modes on the previous two F1 games on F1 2021 and 2020 this won't be a surprise to you and most of you are used to this kind of system for the season and I think we'll agree it works really well I think. And now without further ado it is time to show you guys our brand spanking new look car for season two. Cheers. 
she's looking rather mean, if I do say so myself. There is our brand new car for this season. Like I said, we are strengthening our affinity with Red Bull as a brand. We've now got a Red Bull driver in our car. And so Red Bull are featured on the front and rear wings of our baby in season two. We've got my own personal sponsors, Thrustmaster on the rear and front wing. That big and now classic Arava logo on the top of the engine cover. We've added a lot more red to the car on the side pods, gone are the black ones we had. And you'll notice that the that a lot of the design work is actually now in matte finish to really pop and stand out under any kind of lighting conditions on the side pod, as well as the front and rear wing like we had last season whereas the rest of the car is in gloss we've still got the off-white cream base with the black and the red and with the red bull logos on the wings i think it just ties together to be a really lovely looking car we've got a nod to the season one livery that we use from the in-game options because the top of the chassis still features that kind of red lining on the top you've noticed i've also got a little nod to my friends over at f1 manager 22 with their logos featuring on the side of course the game coming out later this summer at the end of august i'm massively looking forward to playing Playing that game and so that features on the car and you may also notice at the front on the nose cone I've tried my utmost best I've really tried my hardest to try and blend in and kind of hide what is let's be real that very ugly wide cumbersome nose cone of the generic my team car i really don't like the fact that this is the car you have to you know work with now and they're probably going to continue to use this even into the next game because I, I i that that nose cone is just so big and ugly compared to most of the real life teams where they've made a very slim nose so i've tried my best to hide it and overall i'm really happy with it as a first ever custom livery in this game with a brand new car model i might add because unlike f1 2021 where it was the same car models. It's been a brand new canvas to try and design on, very new shape. So as a first attempt goes, I think it's really nice. And I've left on purpose a space on the side pods to kind of invite different sponsors on potentially depending on what country we're in and now that branding and off-white black and red can continue over onto our overalls as well and i must say i think the red bull logo really works very very well with this color palette i mean alex i mean alba looks very very at home really to be honest already in our team which i'm loving in terms of our new helmet design for this next season we've gone back to my actual custom made helmet that was made for me by codemasters on last year's game we've been able to port it over to this one and of course we've got the red bull stickering and obviously a little nod to my esports team that i'm in with quadrant and you can see we've got our custom boots but in red to match the overalls which i think work really really well actually you know that design works well in red so yeah a nice refresh for the next season and kind of grounding the team a bit and making it look a bit more realistic with the sponsors here and there on the overalls and the car and i'm already liking you know this story we've built early doors with having Red Bull supply us but then also deepening that partnership by then getting Albon across into our team while still very much being a Red Bull driver contractually in the background and so he'll still have the Red Bull stickering on his helmet etc etc but now it's time to delve into the actual in-game pre-season bits with the kind of driver training camp for six days to boost Albon's stats as much as he can and it obviously especially now the personnel upgrades aren't working that driver boot camp is going to be very important to try and boost Alex as much as we can into the first race of the season at Bahrain. I was debating what other activities we do because I didn't want to bring down the morale of any department. So in the end, we just went for a merchandise sale. And already, this partnership with Red Bull that's deepening for this season is paying dividends because they've uh, told us good news. We've got some upgrades from their side of things. So already getting a free upgrade then from our power unit unit supplier. Speaking of upgrades, let's have a look then. Where are we on the vehicle performance comparison chart? We are the fifth best team on the grid then. So over the winter break, with that R&D reset, we've been able to gain performance whilst other teams have actually lost performance with the regulation change. They haven't adapted as well as others. Those include Ferrari, who really dived a bit down, and now they're the third best team on the grid, and they're only just beating Alpine, so the French outfit could be 
snapping at the heels of the Italians very soon. Williams and Aston Martin have upgraded over the winter break and Alpha Tauri have fallen flat and they are now the worst team on the grid and Williams actually are very close to Haas and uh, Alfa Romeo. So the, the midfield fight, the kind of, you know, bottom midfield could be a fight between Haas, Alfa Romeo, Williams and Aston with Alfa Tauri kind of close there. You can see it's actually quite quite nicely all bunched up from Haas to Alfa, uh, Alfa Tauri down there. So it's definitely not going to be kind of one single backmarker team. Everyone's going to be fighting for those positions. We're still in a fight then with McLaren, it would seem, as we're very close to them. But McLaren also lost performance over the winter break as they're behind us. And so we've got a bit of work to do to kind of bridge the gap to where Alpine are there as they try and chase after Ferrari. And Red Bull have made a bit of a mark. So Verstappen won the Drivers' Championship. He is the reigning world champion again going into this second season. But Red Bull didn't win the Constructors. Mercedes did. So Red Bull trying to pull up their socks and prove a point that they can try and go out there and win the Constructors' title. So that's going to be one to watch in terms of how good that team looks. Both drivers, not just Verstappen, but... For us then, that's a really good place to be, you know. Top of the midfield in McLaren, fighting for what is P5 though, because Alpine have become a fourth top team essentially, because they're right there with Ferrari. So we've got some work to do, and that work includes buying then a build time upgrade on the power unit HQ. So we will try and take the power unit now, HQ facility, to level 2. And then I was kind of debating what to get, because... Oh, we've already got level 2 on the chassis. We've got level 2 on the aero. So we don't need to buy another upgrade on those facilities. You know, maybe simultaneous upgrades for to, to get three simultaneous upgrades might be nice. But remember, because of the reduced R&D earning that you guys voted for with the career mode settings, we're not actually earning enough R&D to need two simultaneous upgrades right now. So I was kind of really debating, do we buy some personal upgrades? Even though the personnel upgrades aren't applying right now. I've gone ahead and bought the simulator to boost the pace of our teammate. Now, that won't actually apply because we know it's broken right now in the game. But I'm really hoping that within the next week or so, we're going to get a patch to get that in. So within about, you know, maybe four or five episodes time, we could finally see Albon boosted with our HQ upgrades. That still leaves me with a decent amount of money there to spend. Now, we're not going to spend it on upgrading other HQ facilities big time. But I thought about that boss bottom upgrade. Resource point generation. It's kind of tucked away at the bottom there. But why don't we go for it? We're going to go and be a bit smart here. I'm going to buy the resource point generation on the durability uh, department because it's the cheapest resource point generation you can actually purchase. So we're saving a bit of money whilst also getting a boost on R&D generation every single time we get weekly resources in. And those HQ upgrades will come in and there's plenty of time before the bar Bahrain Grand Prix for them to come in. We also get a marketing department event about our brand new rival then. And I've been given a choice of George Russell or Sergio Perez. So I guess the game also is uh, making sure we're a bit lofty with our ambition. We're going to go for George Russell because I think the Mercedes car is a bit more beatable than maybe the Red Bull one. Uh, seeing as Red Bull are the top, top team right now. But even Russell may be a bit of a stretch. I feel like we're probably going to be fighting McLaren again and maybe Alpine. Uh, you know, if we have a good day. So let's just see about that. But we have more resource points now to spend. So we go ahead and purchase a weight redistribution upgrade. And we actually need to work a lot on the chassis because uh, somehow, you know, from the start of season one where we poured so much investment into the chassis, our chassis now is the worst chassis on the grid and our engine's the best and our aero's in the top four. So somehow we've kind of been, we've kind of let our chassis upgrading slip away a little bit, probably because they, they cost so much on some of the major upgrades on the weight reduction and redistribution. So we need to work on the chassis a lot more early on. So that's where all our development will be going in early doors into the season, I think, because the engine and, and aero is in a pretty good place. But I was surprised about that. But uh, yeah, so with that then, that is all the kind of admin to go through in terms of our facility upgrades and R&D upgrades before the Bahrain Grand Prix. To end off this preseason video now, it's time for, I guess, the highly anticipated talk 
about the driver market. What are the driver transfers saying for this very first transition into a new season on this game? So you already know about our team, of course. We've signed Alexander Albon and bringing him in with the connection we have to the Red Bull family. So he'll be alongside us. And, uh, well, he's over 80 rated and with some boosted stats thanks to the driver camp, he's actually 86 rated going into Bahrain. So I have some really high hopes for what he can do at the start and over the course of the whole season, really. Signing Albon, though, away from our team meant we did have to drop Felipe Drogovic. Now, Drogovic has found himself a seat because Alfa Romeo, they liked what he was doing in our car last season. They saw that podium at Spa and were impressed. So for those of you who wanted me to keep Drogovic, don't fret. He's still on the F1 grid. He did deserve a spot on the F1 grid. And I'm thankful that Alfa Romeo have signed him alongside their team leader, Valtteri Bottas. So Guan Yu Zhou has been dropped. Bottas was, well, pretty much got the majority. I think like 85% or 90% of the points. So it makes sense. But this is a very exciting partnership. I think Alfa Romeo could do some real serious work with both these drivers. But Guan Yu Zhou being dropped then by Alfa Romeo meant he was a free agent. And of course, Fernando Alonso has retired out of Formula 1 now in this alternate F1 universe of ours in this game. So that left a space open at Alpine, the French outfit, now spearheaded by the Frenchman, Esben Ocon as their new de facto team leader. Guan Yu Zhou, though, coming into Alpine might be some fresh injection of cash, maybe some financial improvement for the team. They're already kind of there now alongside Ferrari in the R&D chart, but with more injection of cash, maybe, from Guan Yu Zhou's sponsors, maybe Alpine into the next season could really take it up to the next level. Now, we were unsuccessful in pursuing Sebastian Vettel and Aston Martin for good reason have kept them on. Obviously, after winning a race last season, Aston will be hoping to build on that. They retain their partnership of Vettel and obviously Lawrence Stroll's son, Lance Stroll. Alpha Tauri, they're going to have a difficult season, I feel. Still at the wheel is Pierre Gasly and Yuki Tsunoda, but now apparently the worst team on the grid. It can only go up from there. McLaren stay put with their driver lineup of Lando Norris and Daniel Ricciardo. I'm surprised because I feel like Lando was performing at a lot higher rate than Ricciardo and I'm, I'm surprised in the game that McLaren did not look to sign someone else but they stay put and they stay firm with consistency to try and maybe shoot up the grid that way. Red Bull with the reigning world champion Max Verstappen of course staying put. Perez even though he felt the pressure from not performing and at one point, he was behind me in the Drivers' Championship for a lot of the season. Red Bull still have faith in Checo to do the job of a second driver underneath Max Verstappen. And so they've retained him alongside the reigning two-time champion now. And finally, the last team on the grid to stay put all the same are the Silver Arrows, Hamilton and Russell. Now, of course, they won the Constructors' title. You know, uh, you know they started off as the third best team on the grid. Like in real life, they were a bit way off Red Bull and Ferrari. But they kept, they got their heads down, they upgraded, and Hamilton ended up winning multiple races last season. Russell won a couple of races, and both of them as a pairing were so equalized that they won another Constructors title for the German outfit. So there is absolutely no reason why Mercedes wanted to change, and uh, so they stayed put with Hamilton and Russell. And this time round, they've lost a bit of performance, but maybe they can hit the ground running this season, and maybe one of these guys will be in the championship fight for the driver's title. Now coming on to the rest of the grid and there are some shake-ups and movements in the driver market. Starting off with Williams, you can see they're spearheaded now by Kevin Magnussen, the Dane alongside Latifi. Of course, they're always going to keep Latifi there for the funding, but K-Mag is a real good spearhead signing to lead their team into the midfield battle in Season 2 with their upgrades now into this year. I think Magnussen is actually a really perfect signing for them and this is off the back of a story developing with Ferrari because Ferrari's lineup has changed and it's a bit of a shock. Leclerc is still there. They're golden boy, but Ferrari have had enough of Carlos Sainz. They've booted him out of the top team and Oscar Piastri, the F2 junior driver, is now at Ferrari. He has been stolen away from the Alpine Renault Academy project. He is now... He, he has been stolen away and left the Alpine Renault project 
He's been stolen away and has officially left the Alpine and Renault Academy project and has been signed to Ferrari as a young hotshot alongside now Leclerc, who used to be a hotshot himself, but is now the established senior man at the Scuderia. But this is a big gamble for Ferrari in a season where they've lost performance. So we're going to have to see how this one develops. But yeah, quite a shocking development there in the Ferrari camp. And it actually also affects Haas because... The reason why Magnussen was a free agent in the first place was because Ferrari wanted to keep Sainz around in the Ferrari stable. They're unhappy with how he did last season, but they're not totally done with him. So they demoted him effectively down to Haas in place of Magnussen. So Haas are now fully kind of almost like a Ferrari B team in a way because they've got Sainz in one seat and then they've got Mick Schumacher who's always had that affinity with Ferrari since his junior category career. So both are very much in the Ferrari stable, but you've got Sainz effectively demoted down into Haas. And obviously Haas were very willing and happy to let go of their own signing Magnussen to accept the Ferrari driver because obviously Sainz is still no slouch. He's 88 rated. And that is why then Magnussen was a free agent available to be signed by Williams. So already two seasons in, so already into only the second season, we've kind of built already this really neat alternative F1 universe story uh, going into season two and that is where the pre-season video is going to end guys if you have enjoyed it and are excited for the second season then be sure to smash the like button let me know what you make of everything you've seen today the car the driver transfers just the vibe going into next season who do you reckon is going to be fighting us in the midfield who do you reckon is going to be fighting at the top and how do you reckon those new signings and new teams are going to be doing let me know in the comments below if you're around here then do get subscribed for weekly formula one content and i'll see you guys next time for the start of season two at the bahrain grand prix till then goodbye